Good afternoon. It's the penultimate stage of Tour of Wallonie, this important stage race in the southern part of Belgium as we head from east to west from the capital to Provenville. It's the first time that we're back in the capital to begin a stage since 2004. Dylan Tunes has the overall lead, three Belgians in the first four positions. Tosh van der Sande now over a half a minute back on his fellow countrymen following the BMC riders' wonderful success on stage three yesterday. It really was a dominant performance up that one kilometre finishing climb. And van der Sande and co are going to have to find something special to unseat Dylan Turns, who seemed determined and capable, to say the least, as he headed into the final yesterday. Alexi Gujar controls the uh, mountains competition. The points competition is uh, also controlled and led by Dylan Tunes. Benjamin Thomas is uh, among a number of riders that are scoring well. Intermediate sprints competition is uh, controlled by Elvaldus Siskevicius. There's the parkour for the riders today. Just over 100 miles, 164.1 kilometers of racing in the Walloon region of Belgium. We head down to a finishing circuit and a finish in the beautiful small village, well, it's a sort of small town, big village of Provence de Ville. And here's the scene out on the road with the aforementioned Valdis Siskevicius on the front of the breakaway group of five riders. They've been out front since uh, not a whole lot uh, after the flag came in to end the neutralised section. You see the roads glistening. It's been, well, summer showers for the riders today. The Skies threaten overhead, and, but it hasn't been cold. And uh, no real need for the rain jackets for the riders, especially given the pace that they're setting. They're on the fast schedule at the moment. They're really pushing hard. They're inside 57 kilometers to go to the finish in Provenceville uh, today. The anticipated uh, sprint finish for the riders, that's what it was expected. But these riders are pushing hard, and they've still got three minutes of an advantage. The last of the breakaway riders, I will remind you, was caught within sight of the line yesterday. It was a brave effort yeah, indeed. Didn't quite uh, pay off on that occasion for Alexi Gujar, but uh, Gujar has got the mountains classification lead as uh, a significant consolation. His breakaway companion from yesterday, Siskevicius, has gone raiding again, and he's uh, picked up the intermediate uh, sprint points along the way. We've had two sprints already. Got another one coming up with just over 35 kilometers to go. Will the five riders at front still be at front, and will there be an opportunity for Siskevicius to take another five points towards his bid for that uh, intermediate sprint classification? Five riders in the lead. Uh, Siskevicius, as we've mentioned, Delmar Reinders is there for Team Rump, but he's in the orange colors just at the back of the group, uh, making his way up. Kevin. Del Tom is there for Sport Vlandrin. Kevin Van Melsen makes it two Kevins in the breakaway group, uh, which is dominated by Belgium. Three Belgians, a Lithuanian and a rider from the, the Netherlands. Uh, Den Tom, Kevin Van Melsen from Monte Group Gobert, and Nicolas Klepper, who we saw, saw uh, showing some ambition towards the back end of yesterday's stage, is there for the Telenet Fidea Lions squad, made up of riders uh, who primarily have cyclocrosses, their bread and butter, but who do lots of uh, significant road racing in the Belgian and Netherlands uh, continental level and uh, higher uh, UCI races through the year, building up the miles ahead of the cyclocross season. And he's out front, Nicholas Klepper, the youngest rider in the breakaway group. Behind, you've got uh, WB Veron Classic giving a little bit of assistance to the uh, BMC squad of overall race leader Dylan Turns. Several teams on the front. They don't want to get caught out as uh, they almost did yesterday by that wonderful great late resistance from Alexi Gujar. Lotto Sudal have been very prominent uh, today already as they perhaps uh, look towards the potential for a second stage victory of the week. No surprise that we're seeing the jersey of uh, Direct Energy as well. They've got Brian Kokar who's uh, in fighting form and looking forward perhaps towards a sprint success later on. Aqua Blue Sport we see on the left hand side of picture as well. They've got a couple of riders that could do, uh, could do a good job if it comes down to a sprint today, Aaron Gator, perhaps even uh, Michael Crater, who did well in yesterday's stage. Good top 10 performance for, uh, for the Aqua Blue Sports squads. There's some of the teams that are showing ambition, gravitating towards the front. I'm trying to count down this breakaway group. Inside three minutes now, their advantage. It was at one stage uh, a five minute lead. It's been paired back significantly, but still with uh, just over 54 kilometers remaining. 
It remains at just under three minutes. They're going well out front, but can they possibly survive? Well, uh, one man who'll have a view on that is Brian Smith, alongside me once more to run the rule over the riders. And Brian, it's uh, set up as a classic sprint day. The breakaway group out front, I wonder what they've saved. I don't think they can afford to save anything because uh, two minutes and 42 seconds isn't enough uh, with uh, 54 kilometers to go. You can see, see um, some nerves in the uh, the main group now. Uh, some riders have been uh, dropped already in some of the kind of crosswind se sections. So uh, getting into the fourth stage, we've had uh, three very difficult stages. The, the weather conditions haven't been great uh, in this year's uh, Tour de Wallonie. And... Uh, a lot of riders are um, obviously a little bit tired over the, the days, so uh, five riders in front, uh, they have uh, had the maximum advantage. In fact, just looking at it uh, now, the, one of the riders seems to have uh, dropped off, so it's down to um, only uh, four riders in front. And it uh, looks like uh, Nicholas uh, Kleppi uh, is not there. So the 21-year-old uh, Belgian has uh, been dropped from the, uh, the leading group. So four riders now in the, in the breakaway. They had just over five minutes advantage, you say, Declan. But the gap is coming down. Uh, there is a bit of a, a wind blowing. And uh, there's been a, a slight increase in the, uh, the front of the, the peloton with uh, some of the... The, uh, the uh, team's riding for uh, a sprint today, and, and you can only think, I was just kind of looking at the sprinters here. Uh, Verandes Williams was riding at the front. Timothy Dupont would be one of the favourites for themselves. Uh, can't discount Brian Coca uh, from uh, Direct Energy. You've already mentioned him. You know, two of the top sprinters, even uh, against some of the top sprinters in the world, I would think that, you know, certainly Dupont and Brian Coca would be um, the, uh, the choices there. And then there's a, a various other teams have got their um, their sprinters as well. JMP Drucker normally rides well in a sprint for, for BMC. So plenty of opportunities here, but uh, definitely with about four teams riding at the front of the peloton, four riders in front. The weather, well, not looking brilliant as uh, Klepper uh, decides to come back to the breakaway. So obviously he's at uh, maybe a mechanical just outside the picture. So uh, back to five in front. So four becomes five once more as uh, Nicholas Klepper, the under-23 cyclocross world championship rider for the Belgian squad. He's uh, been a medalist in the national under-23 title race, which is uh, pretty much amounts practically to a world championship medal. Crashed in the early stages of uh, this year's cyclocross worlds at under-23 level, and that uh, put pay to his medal hopes. Pick up Brian Kokar, he's well to the fore, isn't he, for uh, direct energy. He's got his rain cape on at the moment. I did say they weren't really wearing rain gear. A few of them have, uh, have on these... Is uh, wonderfully rain repellent uh, gear, short sleeves, but still does a wonderful uh, job of keeping the rain off to a certain level, and this is uh, perfect conditions for that uh, that sort of equipment. Brian Kokar, we've mentioned. Uh, of the five riders up front, I should say as well, they're the best placed on overall classification is Elmar Reinders, the team Rompot rider. Uh, in orange 357 down, so they've closed that gap now. He's no longer the virtual leader on the road. So they've got it inside uh, GC safety. Question is, will they get them back for the sprint? We'll have the next part after this.
The camera picks out Dylan Toons, the overall race leader of Tour de Wallonne, on the fourth and penultimate stage of the race as he uh, rides through the rain towards a conclusion of what he hopes will be a successful day's racing and indeed a successful stage race. He described yesterday, uh, Dylan Toons, yesterday's stage as being the GC day. Well, certainly the first two days have been pretty grippy as well and have uh, served to forge the general classification. He was in perfect position to race clear of his rivals yesterday. He was level on time going into yesterday's stage, but now he has a very handy advantage indeed. 32 seconds over Tosh van der Sande of the Lotus Sedal squad. Benjamin Thomas, the erstwhile race leader, who took a great solo success on stage one. The Frenchman with the Army de Terre squad finds himself now in third place, but 39 seconds in arrears. There, well, what, uh, first 12 riders are covered by a minute. Still, it's a pretty big uh, advantage to have 32 seconds for Dylan Tunes with just two stages remaining. Will he be able to hang on to it? Well, he's got a good team. He certainly has, and uh, he was very impressive yesterday as well. So, um, as far as the general classification, if he stays on his bike, then I can't see him being beaten in this race. Uh, he looked really, really strong. I'm pretty much head and shoulders above everybody. So he's got a healthy enough advantage, as you say. Declan, he's got a strong enough team to, to be able to help him. But uh, we're in Belgium, anything can happen. You know, it's raining and, uh, you know, the slippy roads and things like that. But, yeah, if he stays healthy and upright, can't see a problem uh, for um, Towns taking, taking this one out. And uh, he'll add his name to a star-studded uh, Palmares over the, uh, the last decade. So it's... Um, been an interesting one today because it has been um, set up as a potential sprint stage. Uh, everybody uh, will be wanting to try and bring these riders back in front for that uh, predicted stage. We do come into the um, the circuit uh, circuit yet again today uh, with just under 30 kilometres to go. We do 24.6 kilometres, so it'll give the uh, riders an opportunity to see the uh, the finish the first time around, and then we do, uh, as I said, just under 20. Uh, Five kilometres of a loop uh, to finish. Very urgent uh, flick of the elbow there from Evaldo Siskevicius wearing the intermediate sprints classification jersey, the rider with Delco Marseille Provence, 28 year old Lithuanian. So it's just under 12 minutes in arrears on general classification, but his target, his focus is 100% now on the intermediate sprints uh, classification the bunch is lined out and the gap now down to uh, two minutes and eight seconds so it's coming down at a rate of knots and it's under the sustained pressure of uh, several teams interesting that uh, well no surprise that we'd see uh, bmc up towards the uh, head of affairs a lot of sedal well they're not much in evidence at the moment i can tell you they have done quite a lot of chasing today they'll be looking to uh, propel jasper de boist into position he's taken a stage victory already this week a lot of sedal squad been successful and they've taken responsibility so far with a certain amount of uh, of chasing but uh, we're seeing the WB Varen Classic Equality squad up towards the head of affairs they were in the break yesterday courtesy of uh, Alexander Kirsch the yellow jerseys of that uh, that local continental level team and it's also as if uh, Verandas Willems Krellen also gravitating towards the front. Well, they have got some great sprint talent, haven't they? Uh, Timothy Dupont hasn't got the win that you might have expected from him, from a man. I think he had, his victory tally was in the teens last year. It looked, seemed as if he was just winning for fun. He hasn't been quite as successful, really struggled to get that win, but uh, uh, well, his team will back him, give him the opportunity, give him as much of an armchair ride as they possibly can. Hoop Doyne as well as a man who's capable of coming up with a good finish should it uh, not work out for Timothy uh, DuPont and they've got a team packed with uh, strong talent. We saw Stain de Volder trying a bit of a late, late attack. Well, a bit of an early, early attack, you might say, coming up to that uh, finishing hill in yesterday's stage. It was late in the stage, but it was early in the final push for glory up a very steep climb. And uh, de Volder will certainly presents that squad with some great experience, great legs, great understanding of what it takes to win at this level. And the Brandis Willems Krellen squad in the uh, the blue colours you see there's uh, sort of light blue and navy flashes on the Brandis Willems Krellen Belgian registered team as so many of the squads in this race are a total of 20 teams involved in this race six of them are world tour level 11 at uh, pro continental division two three continental level teams all adds up to uh, 20 teams of 
eight riders that started this race. We're down to 147 competitors from the 160 that began at the beginning of the weekend. And the riders moving across the road. Siskevicius just in sort of echelon formation, and that'll give you an indication just as they come out of the trees and into these wide open fields, huge rolling countryside, and the lack of hedges for the most part from the uh, lovely leafy grounds of the Chateau de la Motte. These, these wide open stretches offer the opportunity to split the bunch. And we did see that just before we came on air that were quite uh, quite a lot of echelons forming and riders finding themselves at the back. We even saw a few grumpy exchanges between riders that uh, were finding themselves distanced and not quite able to get back on and were certain sort of, uh, well, fairly heated and earnest requests for uh, riders to make a contribution to get them back on. And they might have radios, but uh, there's nothing like the old chalkboard to confirm them. Turn the situation Well, we have our GPS indication is that that's already come down by another 10 seconds. So inside uh, two minutes of an advantage for the first time since these riders headed off up the road to take what was at the time fully uh, 35 minutes plus of an advantage. Well, that's uh, come down significantly. They're controlling it nicely, 45.4 kilometers for the riders. Question is, will these uh, these windy sections, can they play a role? Fundamentally, for most of the stage, though so the first part of the stage, it was a crosswind, and then they headed uh, east towards the, the finish uh, area in Provence de Ville. That was a tailwind section, but now as they skirt around to the right-hand side and head in a sort of a circular motion to make that uh, sort of almost ever decreasing circles as they pick up that final finishing circuit well, they'll be pre presented with plenty of crosswind sections and the rompot rider rolling off the front here having taken his uh, position up front is uh, elmar reiners best placed overall the young dutchman it's an all-dutch lineup the rompot team and he was just uh, showing us exactly how the uh, how the wind conditions are and plenty of teams up towards the front they all want to get involved early on brian i think they just want to stay out of trouble uh because they, they know you, you can see the uh the kind of wind uh, farm um obviously at the side of the road here uh, so they put them in windy areas to to create energy for the for the locals so uh, everybody, yeah, everybody knows that uh, there's an opportunity here that uh, if somebody comes up and puts the pressure on, then they could uh, cause a little bit of damage. So some nerves towards the front of the peloton. All of the uh, team of uh, BMC look uh, relaxed. Uh, we have four teams riding on the front, Direct Energy, BMC, Verandas Williams uh, in the blue, and also Veran uh, Classic in the... Uh, you can a yellow uh, kit as well, uh, but it's it's more of a case that uh, just keeping vigilant towards the front. Uh, the gap is still kind of hovering around the two-minute mark. If we start to, to kind of pan back, you can just see the thin line towards the back as riders are uh, trying to get a little bit sheltered. The one coming from the right-hand side, uh, so you really want to to be in the uh, the left-hand side of uh, a rider's the rider in front of you, uh, but uh, as we can see, some gaps uh, starting to open towards the uh, the back of the peloton now as some riders are uh, being distanced. But um, these are tough times in Belgian racing. It's always uh, tough, uh, hard racing. Uh, the easier place to be is in, in the breakaway of five, but that break went away right from the start, so they've had to, to try hard. Uh, the threat of rain is now turning into blue skies. Uh, so, yeah, these riders are happy. Like yesterday, I don't think uh, there's an opportunity here for them to stay away, but they'll still believe, they'll still push hard. But uh, so many teams behind uh, are willing to chase this down. Uh, and sport, um, top Sport or Sport Flandern have got uh, an opportunity here from the breakaway, but they've also got uh, Bert, uh, Van Leerbecker as well for, for a sprint finish. But I think looking at the... Um, the riders that we have here, Timothy Dupont of Verandas Williams and uh, Brian Kokar, uh, seem to be the kind of two uh, of the uh, the sprinters that you could call in any any finish with uh, some of the top sprinters in the world. But we've got some others there, um, even uh, Savitsky of uh, Gazprom, uh, a good uh, sprinter towards the end, Jim Bidrocka, we've saw. 
They've seen uh, Dumoulin uh, of AG2R, Plankart of Team Katusha, Lobato of uh, Team uh, Lotto NL, uh, Martinez and Benjamin Giraud of uh, Delco Marseille, Adam Blythe at Aaron Gate of uh, Aqua Blue Sports. So we have got some uh, you know, quality sprinters and it's going to be a, an interesting final. We still have, when we hit this circuit, we still have a a climb uh, which comes with uh, just uh, it while it tops uh, just over 20 kilometers to go so there's uh, still a, an opportunity here um, for the riders to, to attack this climb and it's a 2.8 kilometer climb with um, 4.3 average gradient should be well within the compass of the uh, the stronger sprinters to get over that climb well it all depends on how they ride it and depends on the wind conditions as well as the uh, these riders will hope and pray that there's some opportunity and some delay for the bunch that will allow them to race out front. Yeah, there's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? The, the big windmills from those wind farms gathering up all that uh, Aeolian energy that they possibly can. And now it's a oh, sun-drenched peloton, isn't it, as they race towards the conclusion of this stage. It will be interesting to see exactly how BMC are going to play it. They've got the uh, yellow jersey Dylan Tunes. They also have a very, very accomplished sprinter in the shape of uh, Yempi Drucker, who's second, on, uh, sorry, fourth on stage two. So the uh, BMC squad is it all about looking after Tunes. Tunes can be quick in the finish too. Um, it can be, but I think that uh, Jempy Drucker would be the, the best bet uh, for a, a finish here. Obviously, they, they want to try and control the race. Um, the danger is uh, Reinders in front from Rompot. He started the day uh, 3 minutes and 57 seconds. You see the, the gap now. So there's no real danger. It's just uh, respecting the jersey, controlling the front of the group. BMC putting only um, uh, Flores Gertz uh, at the uh, front to uh, control things and uh, doing a very good job. And uh, they're keeping a kind of powder dry. Uh, to help uh, Twins and also uh, I think uh, GMP Drucker towards the end but it's going to be a, an interesting final, uh, plenty of teams without uh, a GRC or a stage one that want to try and do something today. Well, that was one of these sprinters that we mentioned a little earlier ago Baptiste Plankart is a very accomplished rider his teammate Michael Morkov got up to take second on the second stage but I did notice that uh, Plankart went back to drop off his jacket and uh, one of his teammates came back. I'm not sure whether it was that was to assist Blanker back up through the group, which would perhaps uh, give us an indication of exactly how they were going to set up a little bit later on. Blanker certainly is capable of doing a job for them. And Morkov, too, very experienced rider. Already come up with a good result. Will they back Morkov for the sprint? They have options. And uh, sometimes, I suppose, for the teams, it's about being flexible, isn't it? And being able to change your plan on the road and having a number of different uh, scenarios that you have worked out and also just that uh, experience to know exactly how to play it as the uh, race unfolds the drama of a bunch sprint as we believe it's going to be develops on the road underneath your wheels 40 kilometers to go now for the riders that's uh, just about 25 miles of racing it's heading towards the final heading towards Provenville and we're going to bring you there just after this short commercial break
in front of the uh, Dutchman Elmer Reinders. In the breakaway group, in the closing stages of stage four of Tour de Wallonie, there's the Rompot man, Elmer Reinders, the best place to rider in this group, takes over in front. His second year with the, uh, well, first year with Rompot, I should say. Moving up to Pro Continental level from the cycling team, Joe Peels. First of a two-year deal for uh, for this man who won the ZODC Zoidenveld Tour in 2016. And has already taken a fine fifth place in the Ronde van Drenthe this year. He's a rider for the future. We head through Dinant. So just inside 38 kilometers in the gap now down just a little bit over a minute and uh, a half for those five riders out front We've got one more classified climb two climbs today first of those taken uh, by kevin del tom not really contested by the uh, breakaway group just inside 40 kilometers to go, that's the Citadel de Dinant. Oh, beautiful setting and a beautiful stage it is indeed for the riders. Oh, what wonderful sights and sounds there are in this town. Running close by the stage as the riders head down towards the conclusion. Profondeville beckons and it is a selection of teams up front. This looks like uh, Lasse Norman Hansen on the front now for the Aqua Blue Sports Squad. Got plenty of pro continental level squads that are willing to contribute to the effort for the uh, pro for the world tour teams. We don't always see this. Six world tour teams involved, 11 pro continental teams, three uh, third division continental squads. Lasse Norman Hansen has put his considerable the weight of his considerable shoulder uh, to the wheel in the effort to close down the group out front to set a tempo that will present his riders into position. Who are they going to try and set up? Will it be Crater? Or will it be Gate? Could it be uh, Adam Blythe? It's, uh, it's a good opportunity there. This uh, for for Adam. He's uh, obviously a quality sprinter, good bike rider, knows, knows his way around, and uh, it could all, all be a, a good bet for him. But yeah, it's always good when uh, the team, as you said, there's uh, other teams riding. Uh, they put a man on the front, and he's uh, obviously a quality uh, rider, is Hansen. So they're started to ride on the front. A little bit earlier on, he was sitting in the wind on some of the uh, potential kind of crosswind sections there, sitting in the wind, uh, allowing his team to, to ride towards the, the front and keep out of trouble. But, yeah, we've got Direct Energy, BMC, Verandas Williams, Verin Classic, Aqua Blue, Coffee. There's plenty of teams willing to ride at the front to bring these uh, five riders back uh, for this uh, potential sprint at the finish. Plenty of enthusiasm. Look at the pace that's being set on the front by Kevin Del Tom, the 23-year-old Belgian with Sport Vlaanderen. Riding through and doing a very strong job indeed. Fourth in the uh, Paris Tour Espoirs uh, uh, race in 2016. Third in the Grand Prix Coquillon in 2014 in honour of uh, the great Belgian former world road race champion Claude Coquillon who passed away last year hasn't got a big palmares uh, so far but uh, he's a young man with developing talent with the Sport Vlander and squad Miss the youngest man in the break uh, who's up front at the moment Nicholas Klepper the Telenet Fidea Lions rider they all seem to be. Uh, they all seem to be working well together. There was a moment uh, just after we came on air when Klepper was distanced by the group, but we believe that could well have been a mechanical issue. Where he just popped back to the car for food because uh, he wasn't too long away from the group and made his way back in, and he's been able to contribute ever since. He needs to contribute too because the bunch behind has certainly gathered momentum in recent uh, in recent moments, and it's a considerably bigger group than we saw. Uh, on the first few days of action, and particularly yesterday, the uh, the group was uh, whittled down to a relatively small and compact number. There can't be much more than 40 riders that took it into the bottom of that finishing climb of, uh, of a kilometre. As uh, Dylan Tunes raced to glory, raced to stage glory, took over the overall lead of the bike race in so doing, and now controls that 32-second advantage as he heads towards the conclusion.
And it's interesting that the, uh, the pro continental teams are willing to contribute and they're not just leaving it up to the World Tour squads. Is that a surprise? Um, a little bit in a way, just coming up to the, uh, the third sprint of the day. Um, you can see the uh, the writer in the jersey. He's already taken the, uh, the two already in the uh, the leaders jersey in that competition. It looks as if he's got his third of the day. But yeah, the um, the continental teams you would think will leave it up to the uh, the bigger teams uh, to to control things. Uh, Lotto Sadal also getting involved with the uh, the mix in the red at the front. And yeah, you could say that um, leave it to them, but. It's also a good boost when you see your team riding on the front and uh, if you're a, the, the chosen sprinter for the day, it just gives you a little bit of confidence that the, the team believes in you, putting a, a rider on the front and uh, it just, you start to concentrate, you start thinking, well, I don't want to let my team down. So, But it's, lot, is it designed to put the pressure on the rider in a way? Yeah, I think so. It's a, it comes from uh, the car behind, so start riding, start putting a rider on the front and they'll choose who it is and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's putting pressure on, on a sprinter to, to try and deliver because every sprinter that uh, wins a, a stage, they will always thank the team afterwards. And, uh, yeah, it's just adding a little bit of pressure. And you could sit there in a bunch and still win the sprint, but sometimes uh, if you haven't contributed and you do win at the end, uh, people start pointing fingers, or oh, why didn't you, you start helping and... So it's, uh, you know, earning, earning the right to fight at the end, uh, but it does add a little bit of pressure to the team. Do you think that uh, riders are given a little bit more space in the, in, the, in, the, in the closing moments of a stage if if their team have been on the front? Is there a little bit more respect there? I don't think there is. I think it's, um, in the end, it, there's so much happening. It doesn't matter if you've been riding or haven't been riding. Uh, it's just, when you look at it afterwards, it's... Um, I think most people will ride today on the front to put a wee bit of pressure on their, their sprinter behind. Uh, and also the fact that, you know, this, this, some of the smaller teams riding, it's, you know, the, you get a, a little bit of pressure uh, and a little bit of uh, TV time as well. Um, you know, that, that's, you, you've got two cameras, one at the back, one at the front and one in the breakaway. So it's uh, giving them an the opportunity and, and you, they always focus on the, uh, the riders that are, uh, that are on the front. So, but I think uh, more so, uh, there's a couple of these teams are riding towards the front to put a little bit of pressure on their, their sprinter behind uh, to get them focused, to get them looking and, and to, to deliver a potential win. Yeah, Chalmers are thinking a little bit for the, uh, for the sprinter, for the designated rider. He's just the ante somewhat. Alexi Gujar, the camera picks him out, who's at the back of the bunch uh, just a few moments ago. Leader of the climbing competition and out front for uh, much of yesterday's stage. Took a long time for the breakaway to get organised yesterday, uh, in contrast to today when it was gone within two and a half kilometres of the flag coming in. But uh, Gujar managed to get involved in that breakaway group, take good uh, mountains points, leads that uh, mountains classification. And there is one more climb today. Called it a Chavry. It comes with just over 20 kilometres remaining in the stage, but uh, it's a Category 2 ascent, so that offers points for just the top three riders over the top. At the moment, we've got five out front. Will they still manage to uh, survive out front for the remaining uh, 12 kilometres that it takes to get to the top of that hill? At the moment, it's looking good for them because the lead is still uh, hovering around one and three quarter minutes, and the tempo set on the front of the peloton. Uh, they mind it to bring it back. It's all a bit. It's the subtle art of timing, it isn't it? It's just a, you don't want to bring it back too soon and ignite a whole load of uh, other extra attacks, as we see WB Varen Classic on the front of the bunch. Riders being led across uh, yet another one of these uh, Brooker, these bridges. And, of course, this race is charting a path that's not too dissimilar to the one that the uh, River Meuse takes as it makes its way through Belgium. 32 kilometres remaining for the riders, just over a minute and a half advantage. It's uh, coming down at a rate of knots, but still five out front. How much longer can they hang on? Della.
on their lead if anything is fluctuating and going the right direction at the moment. The five riders at front on stage four of Tour of Wallonie. Well, they're heading towards the final climb of the day. It's uh, not a particularly long or arduous climb, albeit uh, you've got to take into account the fact that these riders have been out front for, well, about 130 Two kilometres of the 164 kilometres that they'll be racing today as the peloton races down by the River Meuse at uh, an accelerated rate in recent times. They've been on the fast schedule all day. It is, as you might expect, Belgian road racing at its most classic sense. Well, it's classic as a uh, stage race goes, if you understand the uh, obvious uh, contradiction. And it's now BMC on the front, assisted by the well, mass ranks indeed of the uh, Aqua Blue Sports Squad on the left-hand side of picture. Connor Dunn at the back of the group there. He was on the he was up the road in the breakaway yesterday. And who will be the protected rider? They have a few options, as we mentioned uh, before the break. BMC Squad on the front. Well, they're protecting the lead of the yellow jersey. Dylan Tunes is the overall race leader. He just uh, saw him peeking out from the centre of the shot. He's behind his uh, entire team. Uh, Ventoso just in front of him. The Spanish, uh, ex, uh, hugely expense, uh, experienced veteran. So it's just inside 30 kilometers remaining for the riders on stage four of Tour of Wallonie. As they race towards a conclusion in Profondeville, they've come from the capital, Brussels down towards the uh, southeast of the country and it's uh, just past yet another one of these wonderful chapels that have been presented to us on this stage today the Walloon region I think uh, vastly underrated so much of the economic uh, strength of Belgium seems to be centered in the northern part of this country but the beauty certainly is uh, is not lacking in the Walloon region team Kofidis they've got options today they're going to be setting up for Jonas van Genechten has uh, had a relatively quiet season by his uh, standards but uh, Hofstetter 10th and stage 2 showing that he uh, could well be a man to set things up for that they might uh, be willing to back in the final today the Kofidis team well, they have options and the Brenda's uh, Willems Krellen squad to the fore as well as well you might expect of the Belgian based teams want to show well on home soil River Meuse rises in France flows through Belgium and the Netherlands and drains into the North Sea fully 925 kilometers in length and uh, most important river hereabouts as we race through the province of Namur And the bunch now currently being led by the Kofidis team. Kofidis showing willing. Who are they going to set up for today? Kofidis, um, you know, looking at um, their team that they brought here, I can only think that um, they're putting a little bit of pressure on their, their sprinter today. And um, Van Genechten would be their, I think, their, their chosen rider. Uh, I think he's delivered in the past. There's so many riders that. You know, a roundabout at the same level, a little bit of luck, but uh, I would think that uh, Jonas van Genechten would be the, the chosen one for uh, for Kofidis. And as you've already mentioned, Hofsetter has been up there, Rosetto, uh, Tur uh, both Turgis uh, are in here, Van Velsen, Van Steyn. So they've got a strong enough team, so they're committing um, a rider towards uh, the help, uh, but I would think that uh, van Genechten would be the, the chosen one today. Timing nicely at the moment for the five riders up front, just inside a minute and a half for the first time. It's all starting to get fairly busy up towards the front of the bunch as well as teams make their way up and try and take control. And, uh, it's been out with the nail clippers, and they? they've got those uh, gardens and those hedges looking perfectly manicured and pruned to perfection.
124 and it's starting to starting to hurt a little bit isn't it for Kevin Van Melsen 16 minutes in arrears on general classification 30 years of age he's the oldest rider in this breakaway group and with uh, the Wanty Group Gobert squad since 2014 one of those uh, unsung heroes of racing he regularly goes in the breakaway and does lots and lots of legwork up front doesn't tend to uh, to trouble the scorers in any significant way that's not the role that he plays in bike racing it's uh, it's an accomplished career it's not one uh, peppered with big results in in races and uh, there are riders like that they can have a long career and not really ever get involved in the in the race for the win i wonder can uh, van melsen get involved today at the moment it looks like uh, with inside a minute and a half advantage it's going to be tough but uh, Riders, they often don't get the credit that they deserve, do they, for the work that they do and the way that the uh, the racing is organised, the way that uh, modern-day bike racing is organised. Points are so important, so results are important for riders to get contracts, even if they are uh, fundamentally in a domestic role. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on uh, World Tour points, and, but there are so many riders out there, one of them being uh, Manuel Quinziato as well uh, for BMC, just seeing the right-hand side. and. Uh, he's the sort of rider that uh, is a stalwart of a team. He'll sit in the wind pretty much all day for his leader. Doesn't get that many opportunities. Very good time trialist uh, as well. And um, obviously national champion uh, of Italy in that, at that discipline. So they get uh, very few opportunities. But, uh, you know, looking at the Palmaris of uh, some riders, if you've been a pro for... You know, as much as uh, 10 years, um, some of them don't have any wins, but uh, they contribute a lot to the team. And, uh, you know, they're the, the unsung heroes uh, of cycling, but the, it's, you have to be strong, you have to be super strong. And uh, many riders like that role rather than having a, a leadership role, because with their uh, leadership roles, there's a, you know, there's a, a certain amount of pressure, uh, especially, you know, sprinting and, and general classification. There are certain pressures that um, a lot of riders can't, can't deal with and uh, they're happy just to, to go in the kind of support role. By no means an easy job and it is one that the teams understand in the bunch. Uh, the contribution of those riders is more than well understood and uh, that's why the riders get contracts year after year despite uh, rather threadbare Palmares. And if they, you know, riders of that uh, type, if they did actually go to look for results, they might be able to get the odd result here and there. And it would be a different sort of a, a career for them. And they might, uh, the, the Palmares might look a little bit better, but they wouldn't necessarily have a greater value for the team. Exactly. And uh, there's so many riders out, out there that are strong riders uh, that uh, help teams uh, and help the GC and the sprinters teams. And uh, that's why they, they stay in cycling. But uh, today, uh, some of the teams starting to come to the front now. Uh, we're in the run in towards the finish. As soon as we uh, hit the finish, uh, we've got uh, 24, well, according to the, the road book, 24 kilometres to go to the, uh, the finishing line. So, as you see, the ticker's just a, a little bit out at the moment. But uh, this is what the riders will see uh, the next time round. The riders working their way down towards this uh, finishing town of Profondeville. Down by the River Muse. And no time to take in the sights and sounds. It's just a final opportunity maybe to uh, to get some drinks on board. Will it be final 20 kilometers before the, the bar is closed? And now it's a puncture there, actually. Yeah, now it's just uh, should be closed by this point. That's Nicholas Mass. And he is a rider of considerable strength. A big, big unit. He is in the very much in the mould of the tough, hard Belgian roadman. Through the finish line and the large crowd already waiting. And it is the bell that's taken by the five riders up front. They've lasted to this point. Just one local circuit for the riders. And just under 24 uh, kilometres remaining. So the teams and the riders will have attempted to take in as best they can exactly the way that the uh, the finish uh, 
the finish operates. For all that, though, it tends to be a very, very different road that's presented to them when they're absolutely ra racing uh, pell-mell, when they're absolutely flat chat. Yeah, I think the important thing is uh, the, the wind direction here. Uh, I think uh, the wind, from what we can see, is a bit uh, of a headwind uh, finish here. So for the riders to come down here at maybe uh, 28 miles an hour, uh, the next time round this they'll be doing probably 38 miles an hour, so they'll see it um, a lot quicker. But, uh, yeah, it gives them a, a, an indication of what it's going to be like. You can take something in, isn't it? Bunch is packed wide across the road. Ross Bowman, the centre of shot for uh, Lotto and El Yumbo, we pick out. But, uh, the riders all very much in control of this one. A minute to the advantage, 23 kilometres remaining in the stage. Spoiling up for a sprint. We'll bring you all the way to the line after these. Tura Walloni racing into, well, back into Provenville. We've already been across the finish line once. We're on the final local circuit, just one uh, finishing circuit for the riders today. And it is very much lined up for a bunch finish. That's the way it's characterized in the road book, and that's the way it's playing out on the roads of Wallonia today as the Riders on the front of the uh, peloton are starting to set a tempo that's making it difficult for those riders that haven't brought their A game uh, to Belgium today. The Aqua Blue Sports Squad, the Pro Continental team, in amongst the Lotto Sudal riders at the head of affairs. Army de Terre next up. Gazprom well to the fore as well. Francis de Jeu, have they got anyone for the, uh, for the sprint? Perhaps uh, odd Christian Eiking can do a job and up front while well, the fractures are starting to appear in that uh, breakaway group of five because Evaldus Siskevicius moves across and realizes that uh, the young cyclocross rider, Nicholas Klepper, not quite equal to the task of closing that one. So Telmar Reinders tries to knit together the group once more as we get a sight of this uh, climb. They'll be offering points at the top of it. Will these five hang on out front to take those points? Perhaps we'll have Riders moving a little bit closer to Alexi Gujar, who leads the mountains competition uh, heading into this stage four. Just under 22 kilometers remaining in the stage. A lot of Sudal have control of the front of the peloton. They're getting plenty of assistance, and indeed they have done of late as the riders uh, in the main peloton make their way onto the foot of this uh, finishing climb, this final classified climb of the day, final one of two. So it's uh, very much a day that's been lined up for the sprinters. Talonet Fidea Lions riders starting to drop towards the back of the peloton or even drop off the peloton, and indeed in the uh, break up front, their companion, their teammate, Klepper, is fighting manfully to stay with the leading three riders out front as Kevin Del Tom discovers that his legs aren't quite equal to this one. And the 
Combativity Award, well, it's likely to go to one of these five riders, and surely it'll be one of the riders that survives the longest. I can tell you, Siska Vicious won this uh, award yesterday, so he is the Combativity Award winner from uh, Stage 3. Could it be that he'll be taking a similar, similar prize for Stage 4 as uh, we had problems for Direct Energy? It's uh, surely not Cockard, is it? No, it's... Uh, Maurice, it, uh, it might have been uh, Maurice that uh, just found himself unshipping his chain on the climb. They have just gone from big ring to small ring. Yeah, just a, that's the complete um, case. Sometimes the, these things happen, and uh, unfortunately, he's uh, he will have to chase to get back up. But uh, yeah, we're on the climb. Uh, this is the last category ice climb. Uh, we go down a quick descent and then back up another climb. You can just see uh, Rinders uh, pushing past now. Uh, these are the strongest riders in the uh, front group. The gap coming down to uh, to 42 seconds now. Inse inside the uh, the last uh, 21 kilometres now. But you know it's still going to be very difficult for these riders to stay away now that uh, Lotto Sudal and the Red the World Tour team are starting to put pressure on. They want to try and um, make it as difficult as possible and uh, maybe uh, shed a, a few of the, the, the sprinters make it. Um, it's difficult because they do have uh, Tosh van der Sand who can sprint very well. But it's uh, De Bee at the front, Sean De Bee, uh, setting the tempo here. As he is wont to do, as he very much enjoys, but uh, it's not going to prevent an attack or two as riders uh, take their chances off the front. Is this an attack to try and sprint across, to make it across to the, uh, to the riders up front? Looks like uh, the Agua Aqua Service squad are keen to get involved in the hunt as they see perhaps he's picking up riders from the uh, that are being dropped and just notice that the the break are close ahead now it's not going to be too long before they're retained as just 20 kilometers remaining in this stage well it was a stage that was uh, set up very much to be a bunch finish at the moment it's looking in similar uh, fashion in similar vein but the I got aqua service team well they've come to race to have a rider that's expected to feature in the bunch sprint so putting riders up the road is probably the way to play it yeah and also this is a, a very young team and uh, I think all of them are, are young uh, De Winter uh, now is a rider trying to go away and uh, sometimes when um, you're in front and you feel good uh, you want to attack uh, you know you learn a little bit about yourself probably maybe the um, the wrong time to to do it uh, you see the uh, the riders just fanning across the, ro the road behind them but they can see that some of the remnants of the breakaway in front and they uh, obviously wants to get involved with the action uh, got some good legs today but back to the front Siski Vicious is uh, the man in the uh, the kind of pink uh, pinky ready top as the uh, sprints leader he's taken maximum points in all three sprints today he has got um, uh, Reiners of uh, Rompot in the orange in front. He was started the day the best placed at 3 minutes and 57 seconds. And uh, the uh, eldest rider in the breakaway, Van Melsen, from Wanty Group Gobert, just at the back of the 30-year-old uh, Belgian. So they're trying to kind of push on 42 seconds. So they're holding it, but uh, as we've already seen the front of the bunch, some riders attacking off the front. Not going uh, anywhere, but uh, the chase is not really in earnest behind. Yeah, they're suffering now, aren't they? This drag is very much a drag in every sense of the word. Siskovicius at the back of the group here looks uh, strong and full of fight, just makes a gear change there, and suddenly his cadence rises. It's, uh, Elmar Reinders just in front of him. Best placed of these riders. He's having to make big efforts every time he goes to the front to get out of the saddle, and he's uh, full of fight, clearly. Kevin Van Melsen was showing the, well, showing the effort of the battle. He's etched into his face as uh, a few few lines starting to appear in his face that'll be tough to get rid of if he keeps uh, racing like that for too long. I tell you what, these guys are really working hard, as indeed have uh, Del Tom and Klepper. Klepper and Del Tom heading back to the peloton. They won't hold them off for much longer. 45 seconds the lead uh, for Siska Vicious. If you were asked to pick out the rider most likely to survive, uh, the, well, survive the longest anyway, uh, you would think that uh, it's a good chance of Siska Vicious. Francis de Jure on the attack as uh, Gordon de Winter heads back into the safety of the peloton and they're scrapping for position up front in the peloton at the moment. Less than 18 kilometers remaining. The attacks are coming out of the bunch to try and chase down this uh, this breakaway group up front. Uh, Jan Lebon 
Well, he knows exactly what his best chance is, and indeed, Francis Dejeu don't have an established sprinter that's likely to challenge here, so it's probably the right play for the uh, French for the French squad as the peloton behind. Goujar is trying to ga gravitate towards the front for AG Tour Le Mondial. He's on the front, and uh, it's just, we normally see this uh, a French rider goes down the, the road, and the other French t t rider uh, chases them back. So. Yeah, rival uh, World Tour squads. So Le Bon uh, is another rider that uh, is trying to uh, distance the uh, the peloton. They can see on, on these long straight roads, they can see the uh, the breakaway just in front, and Le Bon has decided to to have a go. He's almost made it up to the um, two of the original breakaway riders, Del Tom, who actually won the first category climb earlier on the day, and uh, Klepper. So he's just made it uh, across to them, but he looks behind and you'll see. Gouchard and uh, two or three of his other teammates from AG2R riding at the front of the peloton. So AG2R, is it, uh, is it to chase down this man, Johan Le Bon, or are they perhaps looking to present Samuel de Moulin uh, into perfect position as Johan Le Bon offers uh, Kleppe a little bit of an opportunity to stay out front for a little while longer, and the young Belgian cyclocross rider is, well, he's grateful for the opportunity, and he's going to show his fighting qualities. So the thing is with AG2R, they've got a couple of options. Um, they came uh, close yesterday with uh, Gouchard, but uh, they ha do have Sam de Moulin. Uh, but they, all, all they also have uh, Bagdonis, the Lithuanian rider as well, uh, for their sprint. So we'll wait and see what develops. But uh, while this is going on behind, uh, in front, these three riders are, are still trying to, uh, to hang out there with a, a very slender advantage. Yeah, just seven seconds for that uh, group of two riders out front of the peloton. Jan Lebon, who's uh, arrived up to assist Klepper. Meanwhile, these three riders up front with Kevin van Melsen on the front of them for uh, the Wanty Group Gobert squad, the 30-year-old Belgian, 16 minutes and seven seconds in arrears on general classification. But these three riders really uh, a threat. Elmar Reinders at three minutes and 57 seconds back is not really a threat. Certainly not a threat at this moment as we come down to just over 16 kilometers remaining. Provenville beckons for the three out front. The two chasers are hanging on manfully. And, uh, Le Bon, well, does he believe that he can hold off the peloton? It's an interesting attack. Is it an attack that would have been planned by Francais de Um I don't think so. I think it's just a case of um, how you feel good. Uh, looking at Francais de Jou, I've not really demarked a, a sprinter for them, so it's just a, an opportunity. They've maybe not got a sprinter uh, that can beat some of the other sprinters in here, and they're just looking for opportunities. And uh, I know that um, you know they, uh, they've got one rider, Rue, who is uh, one minute and 57 seconds, but the rest of the riders are you know, eight minutes and even more down in the general classification, so they don't have any any uh, real out-and-out -out sprinter. They don't have any out-and-out uh, GC contender, so they're just looking for their own kind of opportunities. So those uh, two riders, Kleppers, finally back in the peloton after uh, while well, the vast majority of the race out front. While well, Lebon, it was a short-lived attack. He's going to try and stay on the front and cover the next the next move as AG Tour Le Mondial continue to try and control the white jersey of leader of the mountains competition. Well to the fore, but Alexi Kujar is not thinking about his own uh, his own interests. He's trying to set something up. Will it be for Kedaminas Bagdonis, or will it be for uh, Samuel de Moulin, the diminutive veteran sprinter? Just a little moment where Reiners finds himself a few bike lengths behind. Sisko Vicius continuing to drive this along, and it's a welcome descent for the riders. They struggle to keep up with the with the pedals and a little bit of a technical left, uh, fast left-hander into a right-hander, and they took that one well. Yeah, fast. Um, you know, you had to be very careful there, and uh, all three got round there uh, pretty well. But yeah, they're, they're giving it uh, all they ha they've got uh, to try and stay away. Still hovering around the 32nd mark as uh, the uh, World Tour team of uh, AG2R tried to uh, to bring them back for a sprint finish. Well, that's what has happened at the back of the peloton. As riders are absolutely scrapping manfully to stay in control. And Gutter Winter, well, it was not yeah. so long since he was off the front, finds himself on the back. Yeah, that's uh, often the case where you make a big effort. You feel good. Uh, there's a lull in the peloton. You attack, and then all of a sudden, 
uh, you get brought back and you, you don't feel so good and you find yourself on the back. But uh, yeah, it's a young team. They're just learning a little bit about uh, racing uh, at this type of level. And uh, I'm sure he's he's got a, a good future ahead of him if he, he learns from me some of these mistakes. Yeah, chastening moment, but uh, well, he's still very much in the peloton, so good effort from Gordon De Winter. And one at the outside of his career. Tell you what he's learning about racing is very, very, very fast indeed into the final 13 and a half kilometers of stage four of Tour of Valoni. Three riders still out front, 19 seconds to the good. Seems inevitable, but they'll continue to believe. The Siscovicius, who seems to be uh, on the front more than most, and when he's on the front, he drives away and uh, opens up another couple of seconds lead over the peloton behind. Still no, uh, no total control being displayed by anyone, uh, anyone squad. Just groups of riders gravitating towards the front, and then after a couple of minutes, then they, they drop back again. So no team is yet able to take control, and with so few World Tour teams involved, it's perhaps not surprising. We had uh, so many teams at the front, Direct Energy, BMC, Verandas, Williams, Veron Classic, Aqua Blue, Cofferis, Lotto Sudal, and now you've got uh, 82R. They want to bring these riders back, and they want to bring them back soon. Uh, it's kind of lumpy until we drop away towards the river again and we get the same running as the riders have already had uh, when we passed the finish the, uh, the last time. So they've already seen it. Uh, many teams kind of sitting back now. Uh, the Army Deter team are right up there. It's kind of hard to see them because they're in uh, their camouflage kit, but they are there. And uh, But definitely we can see the, the Rompot team uh, moving up as well. They'll be thinking of the sprints if these three riders are brought back, but they do have a rider in the breakaway, and that's their Reinders. Well, that's marginal gains taken to the ultimate degree, isn't it? They wear camouflage kits and who can pick them out? It's worked a treat so far, hasn't it? Got a great win on the first day. It's pulling the plug. It's all done for Evaldus uh, Siscovicius. He gives the time-honoured signal to demonstrate that uh, their time out front has come almost to an end. They've still got the 13-14 uh, seconds, but uh, Siscovicius, he's satisfied with what he's done, and he's done a good job indeed. Will he get another combativity award? Who's going to be last man standing? These things matter to these riders. Hang on for as uh, long as they possibly can. And race past the familiar architecture of the Walloon region. As Reinders and Van Melsen persevere. It's not going to be uh, one of those awards for Siskevicius now, is it? Still AG Tour Le Mondial on the front. They put the entire team there. And it is the leader of the King of the Mountains classification who sweeps up the man who leads the intermediate sprints classification. Alexi Gujar on the back of the peloton. Not so long ago, he has uh, made his way up to the front. And now the scrapping begins. As Van Melsen decides he wants that award for what it's worth. And it is worth some money, and it's uh, an element of prestige here. Call to the uh, call to the podium, and it looks as if he's won it too, because uh, Reinders had a long day in the lead of this race, almost uh, well, I want more than 150 kilometres of racing out front in a 2HC UCI Europe Tour category race. Tour of Wallonie. Stage four is boiling to a conclusion. It's the bunch gallop that we expected. Reinders is not going to be involved. Will the Rompot uh, Nederlandse squad, all Dutch lineup, have a rider to uh, race to glory today? Perhaps uh, Cohn from Eltfort can do a job. Van Melsen perseveres. And he's done a job for Wanty Group Gobert. He's been out front all day, so they haven't had to do any work. They've had no responsibility. They still very much have the right uh, among the peloton as if it was required, the unspoken right to sprint. This is the way they race. Uh, we've seen that during the, the Tour de France as well, that uh, they're willing to, to go out there and race, get in the breakaways, sometimes when uh, nobody else wants to join them. But uh, he's trying to hang on to a very slender advantage, 10 seconds with uh, just over 10 kilometres to go. Uh, but uh, looking at uh, their team, they have got uh, possibly an option with uh, De Hayes. Uh, so, you know, they'll be looking to not only... Um, you know, have that rider in a breakaway. They do have another option for the sprints coming in in uh, just over 10 kilometres time. 
So we're down to the final 10 kilometres of racing on stage four of Tour of Volone is Kevin Van Melsen, the final, the lone remaining rider from the five that ventured forth at the beginning of this stage. He's the only one left and he's still full of fight, still pushing hard, but not for much longer. Into single figures in seconds, the amount of his advantage. And the peloton, the baying pack, is looming large in his rear view mirror. Great work being done by A.G. Tawar Le Mondial at the head of affairs on the front of the peloton as they lead the group down towards Provenville at the conclusion of stage four of the Tour of Wallonie. Uh, they're going to set up for uh, Samuel de Moulin at the back of the group. Well, we will see. They certainly have ambition in this stage as one lone raider from the quintet out front for most of the afternoon. Kevin Van Melsen survives, but he'll be swept up very shortly. The big bunch is starting to get organised. These are narrow roads. It just makes it that much more difficult to try and get your team up to the front. Van Melsen lingers for a little while longer. The road grips and uh, rises as we head in towards the uh, conclusion of this stage. Of course, the riders have seen much of this. Uh, these concluding roads, and Van Melsen has a little look around and, well... You almost uh, think that, well, he'd be happy enough at this moment to be gathered back. He's going to believe, he's going to believe for a little while longer, gets out of the saddle to try and maintain the momentum. Van Melsen pushes on for a little while longer. The oldest uh, rider in the group of five that went clear at 30 years of age. So got plenty of years and plenty of fight in those legs. WB Varen Classic. Well, we saw them on the front doing a certain amount of chasing earlier on, and now they're getting involved in the counter-attacks. Yeah, it's a strange one that uh, when you ride on the front, you're riding on the front to uh, to bring it back for, for a sprint or bring the breakaway back to, to give themselves options. And now they're uh, trying to, to go on the attack. You can just see uh, Pim Lichtard just behind for uh, Rompot as well. So this is a hard attack. This is sort of an attack that uh, Pim Lichtard likes to do. Uh, former uh, Dutch champion, and uh, he's finding it really difficult to, to go with the uh, the Veren Classic right there in the front. Well, it'd be a useful one if Lichtard can do it, because Pim Lichtard is uh, fifth overall. He's 44 seconds back. If he managed to pinch a few seconds and, and uh, also took some bonus seconds on the line, well, it'll be a very useful uh, move indeed, and that would uh, pay dividends. As we see, is this uh, Kevin Ister that's uh, managed to just go a little bit away from the peloton but for how much longer 8.7 kilometers remaining it's a narrow advantage another two riders just a little bit of a counter attack so for all that AG Tuorla Mondial were doing a great job of sweeping up the early move and for all indeed that they have that peloton in very much uh, lined out well this is a strong strong move from two very experienced riders and yeah Mr. the Belgian rider on the front thinking that uh, Kevin Ister has been around uh a fair amount of time. Uh, he's been with the Cofferis uh, I Am Cycling team and uh, he finds himself with this uh, Varan Classic uh, team for, for the first year th this year and uh, he just used the experience. They found an opportunity. They were trying to bring it back for a sprint because they do have uh, sprint options, but maybe just thought that was a perfect uh, launch pad. Uh, Pim Lichtard joined them. You just see uh, a rider from Gazprom and I think it is a uh, Fortanel uh, just behind as well, trying to come across. So they're pushing hard, uh, getting close to eight kilometres ago, and another two riders uh, trying to come across. So uh, very difficult to control this section. But when we come back onto the main road now, you can see the same uh, running uh, along the river, and I think it will all come back together. But um, yeah. A good opportunity for uh, some of these riders to, to try and get on the attack here. Well, it's a fascinating conclusion. We're down to the last eight and a half kilometres, maybe in, even a little bit less than that. A bit of a sticky ticker, I think we have there. As Ista's on the front, the Belgian rider for the WB Veron Classic Quality Protect uh, squad. And uh, Pim Ligtau, the former Dutch national road race champion with the Rompot team. It's Belgium and the Netherlands very much joined in union to try and stay clear of the, uh, the two chasing riders. Just got a Flash of the numbers. I think it might be Savitsky from the uh, Gazprom Rus Velo squad in the blue colours. He's picked out as a fast finisher, but maybe he's not uh, willing to back his his sprint today. Remains to be seen. Fortuneo Ascaro have uh, Corbel with the French squad, but no doubt about the two men up front. This is Lichtart in front of Ista. Will those two make it across, and will they be able to 
just make it just that little bit more difficult for the bunch to get in control of this one because uh, so far we haven't seen the usual sort of control that you would see at absolutely top level racing remember of course just six world tour teams and that uh, tends to make the the finishes a little bit more unpredictable very much so uh, and that's why a lot of these races are, are great to see uh, because it's uh, so unpredictable. Uh, nobody's got full control. You can just see BMC coming up here and uh, trying to have some sort of control because, like you say, uh, the uh, the rider at the front is, is a danger. They don't, for um, the uh, Rompot rider in the, in the orange in front, a very, very strong rider, and you really don't want to give him any rope uh, whatsoever, 44 seconds, and if he steals another 20, 30 seconds, then he comes you know, really back into the game, and that's why BMC really have to try and control this. Well, the four are joined. Uh, two have become four, and it is Savitsky and Corbell. Savitsky in the blue of Gazprom, Russ Velo. BMC trying to get uh, control of this one. They've put uh, Yempi Drucker towards the front. Surely he won't be doing the riding. One would expect that they'll be setting up for uh, Yempi Drucker. He is the most, uh, the most accomplished sprinter in the BMC racing lineup. Uh, we've just lost the pictures at a critical moment. It is uh, frustrating, isn't it? What is going to be revealed when they make it through to the finish line in just over five kilometers time? Those four riders out front doing a great job of uh, holding off the peloton. But for how much longer? We wait with bated breath to find out what will be uh, revealed. Well, they still are together and they still are out front as they come inside five kilometers. But that bunch are starting to get their skates on, starting to get organized. That's going to be a source of concern for them. No surprise that it's uh, the BMC squad that are taking this one up. That's Habo from uh, Veron Classic, a quality squad. They'll be much more interested in Kevin Ista up front to see can he possibly... Well, he's finding himself a little bit distanced from those other three riders, and he looked so strong when he kicked off this attack and made it really difficult uh, for, uh, for Pim Ligtart to get across to him. Well, he's managed to make the junction once more, but uh, 4,400 metres remaining, and the bunch just a handful of seconds behind. Closing stages of stage four of Tour of Wallonie, down by the River Meuse, and it is the BMC squad on the front of the peloton, and they're trying to wrestle control of this one. Alexi Gujar is there as well for AG Tuor Le Mondial. They're chasing down this uh, counter-attacking group of four riders raced off the front after the final breakaway group of the day, or I should say the early breakaway group of the day, the final survivor was mopped up inside the final 10 kilometers. And now we have Savitsky of the Rus Gazprom Rus Velo squad flicking the elbow in time-honored style. Dinan turns in the yellow of the BMC team, sitting nestling safely behind three of his teammates and indeed uh, Alexi Gujar of AG Tour Le Mondial all looks in control at the moment but those four riders are putting it up to them yeah strong uh, quartet in front uh, they're giving uh, everything they can and I don't think uh, they're going to manage to hang on because uh, we can see that uh, BMC have put uh, the, pretty much the whole team. Quincy Atto done a long, long turn there and uh, swung over, and uh, they've got some, some other options. Ventoso uh, trying to, uh, to, to pull this back, and we're starting to see some of the, the teams starting to try and get organised, but uh, that was a good attack there, and uh, unlucky they're going to be brought back uh, in the, uh, the last uh, couple of kilometres now. Yeah, riders starting to peel off the front. So the BMC team starting to look, uh, despite that huge effort, well, it's Gujar that takes it up, and he's done great work, hasn't he, in uh, recent times, because he's gone on the front and chasing down for quite a while with the AG Tour Le Mondial squad, lost control of the front for a little while, but he managed to stay up there while many of his teammates uh, uh, didn't. Francais de Jure starting to make their way up on the left-hand side of picture in those uh, familiar blue, uh, white, blue and white colours. Gujar will see that, the leader of the mountains classification on the front, but now we start to see the uh, teams crowding around him. He pulls off, that's as much as he can do, but it's been a brave effort, it's been a worthy effort. The Team Lotto and El Yumbo team taking it up in the middle in the uh, red colours with the black helmets. Well, that's Team Kofidis. Kofidis Solutions of Hofstetter or perhaps Jonas van Genechten. Who will it be for the French registered team? Will it be the Dutchman Jonas van Genechten or Hofstetter? 
who already has a top 10 finish on stage two and is uh, himself an accomplished finisher in the in the flat sprints and it is substantially and for the most part a flat finish yeah very much so uh we can up to uh, two kilometers to go now uh confidence in the red towards the front the the yellow uh is the uh, third division team veran classic and uh, you just see a lot of Sudal in the, the red and the white just in the, uh, the right hand side uh, also in the blue, uh, a little bit of kind of push in there. Stein de Volder trying to look after uh, Timothy Dupont, but uh, really messy as we see um, the uh, team of uh, Lotto Sudal and uh, Tosh van der Sand uh, coming right up now. Well, Lotto Sudal already have a win this week, courtesy of Jesper de Boys, who won the second stage in fine fashion. He led in a group, although that was a very tough rolling stage, but uh, clearly in good form as he got the sprinty speedy finish amongst an even bigger group today Dylan Turns is uh, not far from the front he's maintaining a watching brief and keeping himself in good uh, order and he wants to stay well up towards the front Turns doesn't want to get caught out by any splits here no he doesn't uh, but we've got a, a rush up in the uh, right hand side from uh, Lotto NL Yumbo in the yellow and uh, yeah it's, it's going to be a, a very very messy sprint now looks like like uh, Hoffland uh, is up there for uh, Lotto uh, Sudal in the reds but it's the, uh, the other Lotto team Lotto Sudal in the yellow trying to control things at the front and uh, they'll be thinking of a uh, potential win here uh, by the likes of um, Lobato JJ Lobato already has a top 10 finish this week in this stage race, so the, it would be the expectation that they would go with the Spaniard with the Dutch registered squad. They've got three on the front at the moment. Now comes the other lotto team, the Lotto Sedal squad in the red and white. It's the Belgian lottery versus the Dutch lottery at the moment as they start to launch close to the line. We've got riders trying to infiltrate from Aqua Blue Sport, Fortuneo also uh, trying to get in amongst them. And uh, we also see Brian Kukar, I think, I picked out for the direct energy team as they're inside the final 300 metres going for the line is uh, Team Rompot as well and uh, could this be Blythe trying to move up for the Aqua Blue Sports Squad going to the line who's going to get it could be a famous victory for the Aqua Blue Sports Squad they throw it at the line and it looks to me as if Yepi Drucker for the Team BMC team has just about managed to edge up on the right hand side came with an 8 late run nicely timed looked like Adam Blythe for the Aqua Blue Sport team just could have had his heart broken at the end there but what a great finish and what a finish that was in doubt all the way to the line aqua blue sport looked as if they could well get that victory and they're asking themselves amongst the bmc team can it be that emp drucker has come and taken the victory the camera picks him out let's get a look at this one again from overhead brian yeah it was uh, led out by labato on the left hand side adam Blythe down the middle you can just see no one else had uh, any room to move but i think in the throw there jmp drucker on the right hand side just took it there from uh, Adam Blythe and it was that uh, Van Genechten it was uh, just coming in there very late for uh, Cofferis but yeah you can just see the uh, from the photo finish Drucker uh, Adam Bly, Van Genechten, Genechten over the far side and Labato in fourth place. Well, now he celebrates. He knows it for sure. Well, he, I'm sure he felt it at the time. And he celebrates with the man who is uh, the yellow jersey and the man who took the stage win yesterday, his teammate. It's two wins in succession for Team BMC. They have broad beaming smiles as well. They might. Miles Scottson comes up to give congratulations to big Yampy Drucker. Jean-Pierre Drucker to give him his full title and Adam Blythe, former British road race champion up the middle of the road led out, uh, led that sprint for quite a way see Jonas van Genechten starting to appear on the right hand side of picture the throw at the line from all three riders but uh, Drucker had the momentum yeah, good sprint from uh, Adam Blythe there, got himself in the right place. In fact, I saw him just c coming inside the, the last kilometre there, just been dropped off uh, by his team, so it was a good job there, but just never had the legs uh, to finish it off, and it was a very close finish. Jimpy Drucker just getting the throw in the end. Uh, Kofferis had uh, Van Degen Echten, but he came from uh, way behind, came up the, the left-hand side. The uh, best leader uh, did, in fact, come for uh, Lobato. He just goes now in the left-hand side, but uh, Kofferis are just... The, the, they're nowhere to be seen yet. You can just see trying to come up on the left hand side. Jempe Drucker goes with about 200 metres to go. But at this point, Van Genecht in, in the left hand side for Koffer, there's nowhere to go. He's sitting down, waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, but uh, the sprint launches now, and uh, Van Genecht goes down the left hand side. So he was one of the fastest in the end, but he just had nowhere to go. It was all about taking it on from the front, and you really had to be 
in the front uh, three or four there, and that's where Lobato, Adam Blythe, and uh, Jempe Drucker uh, found themselves. Uh, it was a pretty messy sprint from behind. You couldn't come from behind because there wasn't any openings. Uh, so a good one from uh, Jempe, and a nice sprint there from uh, Adam Blythe. Uh, but uh, Lobato was just kind of banging these bars. He got probably the best lead outs, but just never had the legs to, to finish it off. Well, a lot of riders in there with excuses and a few frustrated, frustrated riders uh, banging the bars. At least uh, JJ Lobato, but it's uh, 30 year old Jean Pierre Yempi Drucker that takes the victory. The man from Luxembourg. Stage winner in the Vuelta España in 2016, one of the more accomplished sprinters around. And now he has a stage win in Tour of Walloni. BMC rider since 2015, three years with the squad. Moving up uh, from Wanty Group Gobert. This confirmation, Jeremy Drucker gets it from Adam Blythe. Jonas van Genechten in third ahead of JJ Labado, Jasper de Boist. Con Vermelt Fort, uh, Bert van der Berg, uh, Julian Duval, Hugo Ofstetter, and Justin Jules. All those riders have featured already this week, but it's Yempi Drucker that gets the stage win. Wow, what a glorious success. Two wins in succession for Team BMC. They retain the yellow jersey. It's all going very well for the Swiss outfit. It's a great stage victory today. So he can stick his tongue out as well. He might. It has been a very successful day's racing. Nice conversion for uh, Yempi Drucker. He can smile. He has taken victory in Tour of Wallonie. Down to the fourth place finish that he took on stage two. Not a factor overall, but they have control of the yellow jersey. And uh, Dylan Toon's always well in command of his position in the bunch in the latter stages. The BMC squad took it up. Uh, okay. Jempi Drucker, victoire ici sur ce Tour de Wallonie. Quel tour pour la formation BMC Quel est votre sentiment Racontez-nous un peu ce sprint là, en légère descente. Oui, c'était un peu euh, étrange. Euh, on avait, euh, c'était tout plat. It's a bit strange, he says. Face, et, euh, It was all euh, flat. Euh, il y a la deuxième étape. J'ai fait un peu l'erreur que j'ai trop longtemps euh, attendu. Ici, dans les bonnes roues, on et, stage uh, two, voilà, I uh, made a mistake à, waiting too much, and now I was on the right, finish, waiting behind the, serré, hein? the right ouais, wheels, voilà, and it, uh, it worked uh, by uh, just a few si centimeters. He was asked if it was very tight, and he said, yeah. On the line, I couldn't tell if I'd won or not, but I heard in the earpiece that I had won. And Tunes is... Confirmed as the yellow jersey holder once et, uh, more. It's so a perfect day for BMC. Et, uh, voilà, demain, on a la yeah, that's a good effort, uh, a great spirit in the team. Jaune. Each one of us has a chance. And priority tomorrow is uh, for Dylan to keep the jersey once more. The final stage beckons for Dylan Turns. He preserves his 32 second lead over Tosh van der Sander, the head of general classification. Benjamin Thomas, what can he do about that from 39 seconds back? Van der Dert, uh, Ligtar Crater, Maurice Van Tom Myers, and Kuznetsov. No real change in the top 10 standings ahead of the final stage of the race coming tomorrow. Chevrolet to Twin. 82 kilometers. We'll bring that to you tomorrow from 2.30 if you're in the UK or Ireland. Well, it's been a great stage. Great success for BMC once more from myself, Declan Quigley, Brian Smith alongside. Right, we'll be back tomorrow.